We're back on the air, and this is the M&A show from Davis Mom D'Augustine, and we are radio entrepreneurs. And if that's what the show is all about, and that's where we're being hosted, I must be sitting with Pat Clendenin. Hi, Pat. Hi, Jeffrey. Thanks so much for being here with well, us. Well, you've again. just loaded this up with stories of transactions today, haven't we you? We have had plenty of great stories, and we've had plenty of great people, including our next guest. That <laughs> means we're talking to Andrew Myers, also of Davis Mom. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Tell us about your practice. Um, so I represent uh, entrepreneurs and family-owned businesses, um, typically emerging companies uh, through their stages of growth, everything from initial organization, uh, establishment of an LLC, shareholder agreements, right through the stages of financing, friends and family, venture capital, private equity, ultimately to a sale of the business. And sometimes they uh, buy a business along the way or they're doing some interesting things, hiring people, leasing, establishing agreements with distributors, suppliers, license agreements, really anything that comes down the pike for these types of companies. What are some of the uh, things you like to focus on when looking at a deal to make sure that the, the transaction can be done effectively? Well, that's a great question. And uh, one of the first things you want to know is or understand is that the team is in place, uh, critical for any, any privately held business that's looking for a sale, but uh, especially for a family-owned business. So you want to have the lawyers, the accountants, the investment bankers in place, all of which also applies to you know, not only family businesses, but any privately held company. But beyond that, um, it's important that the second layer of management that can operate the business post sale be in place. And sometimes that takes some advanced planning, some nurturing of that management team, um, because a buyer uh, will want to know that the business can operate after the sale. And oftentimes with a family owned business, the family members depart. So that's important. You know, it's funny, family members will often be in the position somewhat awkwardly of uh, convincing the buyer that they're not required after the sale, <laughs> that the management team in place is fine, sufficient, and uh, that they are capable of operating the business post-sale. Right. And sometimes family members like to convince people that they're inseparable from the deal. <laughs> well, correct? Well, that's true, too. They have to overcome, uh, overcome that aversion. You know, and it's also important related to having that second layer of management that they their incentives be properly aligned with the family members that are trying to accomplish the sale and by that it typically requires some sort of uh, retention bonus or other arrangement where a management members knows that they are valued that they will be that they'll receive some quote some sort of economic benefit from remaining with the business through the sale and quite quite often after the sale these retention bonuses are usually not paid for six, 12, sometimes even 24 months after the sale. This accomplishes a couple of things. First, it, it mitigates any anxiety that a management member may have in, during the sale process. Sometimes they don't know what's happening, gonna happen after the sale, if they're gonna be fired at, right after the sale. And by knowing that they have um, a bonus in place if they remain, it may, it may prevent them from, say, looking for a job or, or, or get, creating some anxieties with the sale process.